Okay, so here today, we're in the studio again, and we're going to be working on some Satsuki Azalea. We did a video a few weeks ago on Satsuki Azalea, where I showed you some different cultivars, and we were looking at the flowers and different varieties of trees. And at the same time, we did some pruning on this large Satsuki of mine. This is a Rhododendron Indicum Corin. And we sheared it quite hard back into these foliage pads, and about a week after that, we repotted it. So this was done about eight weeks ago. It was trimmed quite hard back, and it's been put into a greenhouse, just an unheated greenhouse for the last few weeks. And you can see it's back budded really well. We've actually got some longer extension growth that just wants pruning back on it. But can you see as we've trimmed it back, it's done quite well. It's budded out really well. And these Satsuki azaleas are always more dominant and vigorous at the base of the tree. So these lower branches, unusually, compared to other trees, they've pushed out quite hard compared to the apex. The apex is a little bit slower. But it's pushing a lot of green, fresh leaf. And if we look at this foliage pad as an example, can you see we've got an assortment of things. We've got some little twigs that haven't yet leafed. This one hasn't leafed at the tip, but it's leafed lower down, so that's fine. We can snip that tip off. There's another one in here that hasn't leafed at the tip. We can take that back, and another one here. Then we've got a lot of growth like this that's just starting to come out with these small, delicate leaves. But then next to it, we've got a, a, a section like this where it's really gone a bit crazy. So it's important when you're doing this work, we're always talking about balance, balancing the vigour of the tree, and the energy of the tree. And as you can see here, this is a prime example where this bit's gone a little bit crazy and this is a little bit slower. So these long ones that are really quite vigorous, they can be trimmed back now like this. And then these, these don't get too far ahead. And by trimming those back, these are the smaller ones because then catch up with it. So it doesn't need a lot of pruning, but some of these very vigorous ones that are starting to put on a bit of growth, we can just nip the terminals of those back just to make it a bit more organized. And then it can all grow out at a better rate. Now this has been in the greenhouse, I'd say for about eight or nine weeks. If we keep it in the greenhouse, we're actually gonna get too much growth here. We're gonna push long leggy growth that we then got to cut back. So this is now going to go outside for summer that should actually slow it down a little bit over it being in the greenhouse. Can you see in here, it's not uncommon with Satsuki, look, it's even budding straight from the trunk. So these buds just put them out in the last few weeks. Obviously in this case, we don't need a branch coming from here, so we can just rub those off. You can normally just rub them off with your fingertips, or if they're a little bit tougher, you can just trim them off with a pair of scissors. So we do a little bit of pruning on this, just to get it a bit more sensible. You can see on here, these tips have just grown out a little bit too long here and here. So a little bit of trimming on those longer ones just to get the foliage pad. Keep it in good shape. Having shaped it a few weeks ago, we don't want it to then go be too rampant and then actually get out of shape again. Otherwise our pruning will have been for nothing. So there's a little bit of pruning to do on that that we're going to do and that's coming on really well in the next in the last few weeks since we did the first Satsuki video. So this tree here on the left is a customer's tree that's just arrived and this has been bought to us for a mid-season prune and a repot. So this is just about to finish flowering. This was in full flower uh, just a, a couple of weeks ago the owner has removed most of the flowers, just leaving a few of these on. So the first thing we have to do with this tree is to remove the rest of the flowers. And on a Satsuki, here, at the base of the flower, there's a little seed here with a stamen coming out from it. It's important to remove this seed, so you can normally just get your fingertips in and just pinch that out. There's another one in here and another one here. So that is the removal of the flower. That's the process we're looking to do. So some of these that are still lingering around, these late flowers, 
they just want these seed heads just plucking out and removing from the tree. So we can go over the tree and do that process. Obviously that big corin that I've just shown you, we actually pulled the flowers off it before they actually came out. We took all the flowers and these seed heads off very, very early on. We didn't actually let it flower. So that's why it's got quite a lot of vigor and that's why it's responded so well to the pruning technique that we used on it. Now, obviously I know some of you are watching this in different climates, you know, in the UK, we don't have the warmest, sunniest climate. So um, the azaleas do appreciate a warm, humid environment. And we're not always able to give them that here. You know, if you live in a warmer part, say a warmer part of the United States, for instance, you're going to be able to trim these back and it's not going to be necessary for you to then put them in a greenhouse for a few weeks. But here in the UK, you know, if we trim them back in early, uh, in sort of mid-summer, we're not guaranteed any sun. So sometimes we do them at that time of year. And if the days are, are grey and a bit gloomy, they just sort of sit there, not really doing much. So we do put them in a greenhouse for the first few weeks, just to give them a bit of a, uh, give them a bit of warmth and to get them growing and budding out and get better quality growth and stronger growth from them, particularly after a hard prune. So this one here has had a little bit of pruning on it. I think the, the owner's probably done a little bit of pruning on it. Somebody has done. So we're just here to make the best of it, tidy it up a little bit more, and then also to get it potted. In this instance, we're going to put it back into the same pot. But this soil, this is pretty tough and compacted. It's been in here for a number of years. So we're going to address that. So first thing, with a pair of scissors, we're just going to reduce back some of these tips. So we're, going to, we're not going to shear it over much like we did the other one. We'll be a little bit more precise with this one. And we can just go through, just trimming back some of these longer shoots. So some of these tips that it sent out, we'll take it back to sort of three or four leaves on this secondary growth. Can you see I'm trying to, I've got an apex in here now that I've trimmed. I'm trying to work down from that to the lower part of the tree, taking off these shoots that are too long. So on this side here, these are going to be shortened back into here and down into here and I'm working away round to the rear of the tree on this side a few here at the top on the back of the apex these ones that are breaking the silhouette a little bit here and then because we've got this again same here on the back of the tree cascading down here we're always trying to follow that that line and continue it down and through like this down to this side so on a turntable just turning it round just nipping these tips off we're not going too crazy with it we're just taking back again taking back the vigorous long shoots just to balance the vigor into some of the ones that are a little bit slower just naturally a little bit slower see this shoots very strong here and we can just take the tips of that out take this one out completely some of these shoots you might have two or three sprouts so the most vigorous sprout we could take that off altogether and then the other two remaining ones we can just reduce them in length just to give them a bit of control and here it's budding at the tip but it's also budded out further back so there's nothing wrong with us snipping it here and leaving that little shoot that little shoot there to uh, continue to grow so we've given this Satsuki a little bit of a trim. I'll turn around, turn it around, see the front to you here. Next thing is to repot this tree. It's going to go back in the same pot. This is just a deep Japanese training pot that the tree is in. And I've already just snipped the wire underneath that was holding the tree into the pot. When the customer brought it up the other day, I snipped the wire while he was here just to have a look at the condition of the roots. So I know it needed doing. So we can slide it out the pot get the root system out over here so these are these azaleas are very very fine 
very very fine fibrous root system here look you can see it's even followed picked up the contours the ridges on the inside of the pot so it's been in there some time so this all wants combing out so that we can get rid of some of the old soil and incorporate fresh uh, fresh soil into the root ball this is very very tough on the top the owner said in particular here on the top on this surface very tough and he's finding it difficult for it to take water up and to get water into the tree so on this top level you're better using a bamboo chopstick or a wooden chopstick just to comb away and scratch up this this surface normally i'd use a metal root hook like this but they can be quite damaging on surface roots of satskis so i'd use a chopstick for this sort of work because it's less damaging I see you in me You're ahead of your time I swear the world will soon see Okay, so on this top surface, again, with a wooden chopstick, we've got most of this all combed out, loosened up, round the edge, we can use a root hook, comb this out a little bit more. You can see it's quite granular round the edge. And give it a good comb out underneath. I've already taken about two inches off on this underside, just by combing it out, and then in with a pair of scissors, trimming back the longer roots like this. And here in the UK, we'd take it back to about this sort of level. Now, I know some of you are watching this worldwide and you might be in a warmer climate and you could probably get away with taking more root off than this and the tree will still bounce back very well and, uh, and grow very strongly. But uh, as with anything, you know, we're working with it in our climate and we don't get a lot of warm, sunny weather. We can't rely on that. So you could take this out you could bare root it you could take a, probably a, a, a lot more off than this in in warmer climates but you need to um, with anything on the internet like this you need to watch it and um, then evaluate what's being done and perhaps just um, moderate it for your climate and growing conditions so just bear that in mind when you're watching uh, watching stuff potentially that's being done in in other countries you know we get the same here in the uk watching stuff that's done in in uh, in warmer climates and you've got to be careful because the trees don't always respond to everything just like you see them do on the uh, on the internet so with a bit of pruning on this underside we've also taken taken a few segments out of here so some of this tough root if we can take a few sort of pie sections out done a couple around there and a couple around here. This allows us to get fresh compost in towards the base of the tree. And then next time we repot, we can do a few sections you know, in different areas. So over the course of a few repots, look, you can get fresh compost further in to the base. So a little bit more work here with a root hook, just trying to tease out some of this old root. So be careful with a root hook bit of wire here look which has been been left on from when it was wired in the pot just now look, just remove that often people leave them in when you repot stuff and you can find every wire that's ever been put on a tree for the last 15 years so it's always best practice to remove them if you can find them 
a bit more combing out around the root ball like this and we should nearly be ready to get this potted into its uh, back into its pot so as we said before let's just pop that to one side and have a little bit of a tidy up and it's been going before in this Japanese training pot quite a deep pot these areas use a lot of moisture so a deep pot can be advantageous um, especially if it's a a beginner that's got the tree or somebody that's new to bonsai in our shallow pot is going to be a bit more difficult to keep the tree alive in so a little bit of mesh like that we'll pop it over the drainage hole and we'll just make a little bit of uh, wire twist just to put in the bottom of the pot like that and we'll just pop it up through the drainage hole, through the mesh, like so. So that's got the mesh nice and secure in the pot. And then we use a couple of anchorage wires, a bit of uh, bit of two and a half millimeter. Just use a bit of aluminium wire for this. Just pop it up through those wire holes. There's one. Another one of those. Just to be double secure. Bring it into a U shape. And again, just pop it up nice and easy. Just through there. Like that. So, this azalea, as with most imported azaleas, is in Kanuma. Kanuma is a Japanese soil. It's a strange product when you first come across it because it's uh, it looks very chalk-like and chalk is quite highly alkaline. This is quite highly acidic, so it suits the azaleas and the ericaceous trees quite well. You grow azaleas, rhododendrons, camellias, styrax, those sort of trees in Kanuma. So pop a layer of that in the bottom of the pot. take our tree just have a quick look at the front of the pot this one has got a few cutouts for the feet so we really want one of those cutouts to be front and forward so there's one there's one here towards me at the front I'm going to take our tree let's have a look where we are with it so that's all right we can put a bit more Need a little bit more canuma. Got a little bit more left in this bag. Mound it up like that, and then forget a tree. And always mound it up like that, and then going to squish the tree down onto it so it flattens out. We don't get a lot of air spaces or pockets underneath the root ball. Get it to this sort of this sort of level like that. Then we're filling with canuma around the edge. Like that. And then use a potting stick or a chopstick just to work that down around the edge of the root ball and also into those segments that I'd removed with my scissors. Get that worked in around the perimeter quite easily. You see the soil level dropping down as you work that in. This canuma fresh out of the bag is very very dry so it's important we give this tree a really good soak of water once we do this because the very fine fibrous root system on the satsuki and this soil will literally just pull moisture out from those fibrous roots if you don't give it a good soak straight away so once we've got it that sort of sort of filled in we can get the wire and just bring that across just pull and twist these ends together. Snip off that excess length. Same with this one here. Just 
bring this across over the root ball like this. I'm going to bring this one up to meet it. Hold the tree in place. Twist those wires with a pair of pliers like that. Just push any, push any excess wire down under the soil surface out of the way. Do the same with this one here. Push that down with some pliers. Then on the soil surface of this, just to maintain the moisture. We've got a little bit of sphagnum moss that we had left over from when we did our earlier uh, video. So normally just use a little bit of sphagnum moss. Just cut it up into sections and moist sphagnum moss and just top dress it around the edge of the root ball. Just helps to conserve the moisture, keep up the humidity, prevent it drying out and aid the growing and recovery process on a satsuki like this. This moss is a little bit little bit messy, it's not as neat as the stuff you buy in a bag. But I didn't buy it in a bag, I collected it. So it's proper natural stuff. So it's a little bit more variable, but it does the same job. I'm gonna pop that on the surface like that. So now we've got the tree outside, it's important to give it a good water. We'll give it two or three cans of water so it can really soak in to that canuma. Keep watering it till it's coming out of the bottom of the pot. So it's had a really good soak. That canuma is so dry, it's important to give it a good water. So we've trimmed back the new growth this had put out, tidied the tree up a little bit, got rid of the root, some of the roots we didn't need. That uh, condensed, compressed top surface we've raked out, and it's all potted up. Sphagnum moss on the surface. I say we'll put this into a just an unheated greenhouse for the next two or three weeks, just like we did with the Corian Satsuki that I've showed you, um, just to encourage it to back bud and put new growth out. And uh, after two or three weeks, it can come out of the greenhouse and go back outside. So please give us a like and a subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of these upcoming videos that we're putting out over the next few weeks. Hope you've enjoyed it and thank you very much.